this is amazing. Now we are going to see about graph rag advanced. By the end of this video, you will know how you can ingest the data that is ingesting multiple pages and multiple papers together. Then after ingesting, how you can use that in a notebook like this and extract relevant information, integrate that in your Python application like this, and finally create a chatbot like this where you can ask, give me more information about VLM and click enter. Now it's loading and the back end you can see it automatically go and query all the relevant information based on scores. And finally you get a response like this, vision language model, a comprehensive overview, key entities, researchers in the VLM community. So this is based on the papers which I ingested earlier, then implications and future directions. Similarly, you are able to generate graph rag and integrate that in your own application. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about graph rag released by Microsoft. I've already explained in detail on the basics, which I've linked that in the description below. Now we are going to focus on more advanced tasks. We are going to see how I ingested all this data, integrate that in a Python application, and finally create a user interface like this. Also, it costed me a lot just for this one project. How can you prevent this from happening? The list of steps which you can do to decrease this cost. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. First step, pip install graph rag and then click enter. This will install the main graph rag package. Then export your graph rag API key like this and then click enter. In one of my previous Olama project, where I did an AI research using Olama, using that I was able to query VLM and then click submit. This will automatically download all the research articles from archive into a local folder like this. As you can see here, it's automatically going through the VLM and downloading it. I will put the link of this tutorial in the description below. So after downloading all the relevant papers, as you can see here, I converted that PDF, that is source file archive papers, to the destination folder VLM papers. So all the PDF got converted to TXT file. So the first step is to download the data that I have done now, but you can download your own data or you can keep your existing data. So you can see after conversion, all the TXT files are in my VLM papers folder and it's all text format. So every single file is a big chunk of data and in text format. We are going to ingest this. To do that, python hyphen m graph rack dot index, then init function, then hyphen hyphen root, then dot. That means it's in the current folder. Then click enter. That will automatically create the settings.yaml file. So here, one of the key thing to save cost is to keep a cheaper model like GPT 3.5 Turbo because the number of requests is going out is huge in regards to this graph rag, which I experienced. You can also play with this tokens per limit and request per minute. So you can get this data from the rate limits page in OpenAI. There you can see for GPT 3.5 Turbo, the total transaction per minute is 40,000 and batch queue limit is this one. This is for free tier. So change this setting according to that. Next, other information I'm keeping the same. Next, in regards to input, all my input is in VLM papers folder. So I'm just changing that to VLM papers, then keeping all the remaining things the same. So my settings.yaml file is done and we have already exported graph rag API key. Now we are ready to ingest the data. So just type python hyphen m graph rag dot index hyphen hyphen root dot and then click enter. Indexing is a process by which you convert the raw data or unstructured data into a structured data in a graph format. So ingestion, that is indexing is done. Next we are going to perform graph rag. So we are going to create a file called app.py and let's open it. Inside the file, first import os, pandas as pd, tick token, async io, print, read indexer, chat open ai, open api type, global community context, global search. Next, step number one, that is setting up the large language model. Then we'll be loading the context, then we'll be setting up graph rag. And finally, we are going to run it. So the run process will have the question and in the graph rack setup, we will pass both the context and the question to get the final answer. 
So let's go to step number one, set up the large language model. So step number one, set up large language model. Yes, getting the API key from the environment variable, setting the large language model GP 3.5 turbo. Then we define the chat open AI function. That's where we are going to define all these API key, large language model and other types. You can even change this model based on your preference, but always consider that will cost you more. Now loading tick token, this is for counting the number of tokens in each query. Now step number two is loading the context. So loading the context, setting up the variables, the locations where all these values got stored. So all data got stored in inputs. So if I open the inputs folder, you can see all these files. So these files got created when I indexed or initiated the graph rag index. So in this way, we are integrating the graph rag in our Python application. So loading the data by mentioning the path, then we are defining the community level. For now, let's define that as zero. Then loading entity, loading community report table, entity embedding table, and reading those documents. And just printing the number of records for our reference. Also doing report underscore df dot head. This will print the top five records. Next, global community context. That's the main function where we passing all the loaded documents in here. That's it. Step number two complete. It's just the process of locating all the data which we already indexed and using global community context to create the context. Now step number three, set up the graph rack. So here we are going to define some parameters like context builder parameter, then LLM parameters and reduce LLM parameter. Then we are going to define the main function that is global search function and passing all these parameters. You can modify these parameters based on your requirement. This is where you mention the temperature, the max number of tokens and much more. Now step number three completed and final step is to run it. Running the search. So here we are defining the main function where we are awaiting for the response from search engine dot a search query. So we are passing the question to this global search. Now we are defining our main function and adding our query VLM future work calling the async IO because it's the async function and we are waiting for the response to process. And finally, we are printing for our reference. That's it. As a quick summary, we set up the large language model. We loaded the context. We set up the global search function. That's where we will pass both the context and the question. And finally, we set up the run to get the question and pass it to the global search function. Now using the context and the question, the global search function is going to perform graph rag and run it for us. Now I'm going to run this code. Make sure you've already installed graph rag and rich. I'll put all the information in the description below. Then Python app.py and then click enter. Now you can see the total number of records is 1858 and it's performing global search, which means it is going through the, all the records provided so that it knows the overall context. So here, the question we asked about VLM future work, and it gave me this answer with the reference, enhancing model performance and capabilities, addressing vulnerabilities and challenges, collaboration and innovative research, and much more. And here you can see the LLM calls is 10 and LLM tokens is 35,000. So when I come here, the community level, I mentioned that as zero, which means it's going to perform the least. So based on this image, currently we have set our community level to zero, which means it's focusing only on the retrieved document, but we can increase the communities to one or two. I'm going to show you after changing it to community level one. Now running the same thing again, Python app.py. This time it's going to create more number of calls and here is the response. So this is based on a much more understanding of the context. So the total number of LM calls is 91. Previously it was 10, now it's 91. And if I increase that community level to number two, the number of LM calls at least 150 and it will cost more. So the clever way is to use this community level based on the task which you are going to perform. If it's for basic writing or basic research, make that to zero. If it's for, if it's for more advanced, keep that as two. As you can see here, my spend peaked when I used community equals two and also I indexed a bunch of data. So always make sure to set the appropriate model and the right community level to keep the cost low. Similarly, we can perform the local search. So everything same as before, setting up the large language model, loading the context, 
but the key difference comes when we load the context because we are using a local search mixed context function and we are loading as before then another change is that we are using local search function instead of global search apart from that other things remain the same but this time it will be more or less similar to the level 0 community and there's one more extra feature is to question generation so there's a function called local question generation and we can pass the keyword or the query and based on that it is able to generate questions now i'm going to run this code python local.py and click enter and here is the response future work in the context of vlm rms and vlm involves exploring extension and improvements to enhance the performance and safety of these models and it gives information this is considered basic compared to the community version we can also extract how this got generated by retrieving all the relevant context the relations and finally here you can see the questions which got generated based on the keywords which we provided how do VLM contribute to tasks in natural language processing and computer vision. What are the key entities and relationships associated with VLM and its related entities and much more. Similarly, we have a notebook version available for the same, which you can run and get response in the same manner. The final step which we are going to see is to create the user interface. In this, we are going to use Chainlit. So I've imported Chainlit as seal and all the code remains the same. And we are going to perform global search. In this, I'm going to use a function called seal on message decorator. That's where it automatically creates a chatbot. And whenever we type some question, that question will be passed as query to the global search function. So that's the only key difference. Now I'm going to run this. Pip install chainlit to install the chainlit package and chainlit run ui.py. And here's the user interface. Now I can ask, tell me about VLM and click enter. Now it's loading and the backend we can see it automatically retrieves all the context, summarizes that, and finally we get a response like this. This is based on the context which we provided initially and the indexing data. So key entities and researchers. So I uploaded research articles. So it's getting me all data relevant to that. Research focus and contributions, application and implications, collaborative efforts and community impact, future direction and challenges. That's it. Now you are able to integrate GraphRag in your Python application. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.